I'm subscribed to this magazine, or I think it's an internet magazine called Hyper Allergic. And it's a very interesting, uh, I'm going to attach a link, I'll highlight it and uh, copy this. Uh, this is actually uh, an article on a, on, a, on a fellow, on, a, on an artist, on a countryman, fellow countryman, Hans Hacke of mine. And he's just produced a, a sculpture in what is called the fifth plinth competition. This is something in, in Trafalgar Square. Uh, this is uh, this is an image of uh, the piece that this artist has produced, and <laughs> I, I, I'm not I'm not really really familiar with him, but I I, I come across a lot of these artists, uh, and he's been functioning. He was born in the third 1935, six seven somewhere in there. He's mature. He's been around for a while. He was a teacher at Cooper Union for about uh, 40 years. Uh, people like this. Uh, Ba basically, they function as academics and teachers, and nothing to take away from that. Uh, but he's been producing work, and I'm just going to uh, make a quick comment on this in relation to Fukushima, uh, the idea of art representing its time. And I think this is a fabulous piece of work. I, I have to say now, you know and I know that what's happening here is uh, this is all shipped out. I don't know where whether he did actual drawings for this and then it's shipped out to a company that produces this bronze and it's interesting it's a skeleton of a horse and uh, there are obviously many significances metaphors that you can draw up and right here there is a it's called gift horse and it has a little bow on its leg with which is actually a working ticker of the London Stock Exchange. <laughs> I mean, talk about a sense of humor. I, I love that. This is great. Now, my thought, and I'm going to attach this. You can read the uh, interview. There's uh, uh, He's asked questions and answers and stuff. And he's in his 70s. He's probably, uh, what, maybe almost 80. And uh, I, I, what I don't understand is it, he keeps his answers very close to his chest. He doesn't make a statement, although everybody knows he's a political active, well, not active, political activist, but his work reflects his conscience, an activism, uh, a demand for justice. His entire body of work has this backdrop of conscience. And like I've been saying, I mean, I, I really like this, and I don't know why uh, somebody... Uh, like this would be incorporated within the bosom of Trafalgar Square, the heart of London. The, the, don't they have Trafalgar, like the guy that built the empire? And this is the death of an empire. They represent themselves. They're, they're, uh, uh, it's, it's like they're, I've listened to YouTubers that have uh, said this, this group of people that run everything will allow the public the uh, an expression will allow the expression in the population will permit this to happen to reflect the destruction that they know we are in perilous times now you don't put this sculpture up unless there is some kind of uh, we're in the age of fission people and this is the uh, the expression, I mean, this is, and, and uh, Louise Bourgos uh, did the spider one, and the spider one is very similar to this sort of uh, uh, a feeling of destruction. Right? It's, it's a work of art in the age of fission, like this is, and he got it in under their noses. But I actually believe it is acceptable still. This is sanitizing what it is we're facing. As much as I... I like this. I really like this. But then in this article, in uh, Hyperallergic, you can see how he doesn't open his mouth because he's afraid it'll be misinterpreted. And what is he afraid of? He's almost, you know, how many more years does he have as an active artist? I hope a lot of years. I hope he does a lot more work and whatever he does. But what is his problem? So when I, you know, in my new 
incarnation, I'm going to focus on the art things and how the art is letting us down. And I love this piece. I think this is tremendous. This is an excellent piece. But it can get turned around very easily if you just let it sit there like, oh, it's just a skeleton. Why doesn't he come out and say this is this represents, I, well, I know why, because there is this kind of argument, a thing that happens among artists, they're afraid because the aesthetics is everything to them. The aesthetics, being nailed down by some critic who's going to pick on his statements. I mean, he's made a statement, but at the same time, there is this incomprehensible reluctance just to be out there and to express what you're thinking. There is no damage done. People will still interpret the way they want to interpret. If he tells me this is about uh, prehistoric, uh, the, the relationship we have with prehistoric times and how cavemen uh, failed to see the meaning of the universe because they couldn't look through uh, x-ray eyes through uh, their animal. I don't know, whatever. It's like the explanation is not going to detract. It will add, it will add. What do these people not understand? And I like the activism of this uh, person. He, he was involved in, uh, uh, in criticizing the museums in the 70s. He was actually banned. The Whitney show was canceled because he had exposed uh, a slum landlord in his work. Interestingly, the photographs that he used uh, looked very much like the physical graffiti building, but it's, it, it was a different, it wasn't the St. Mark's Place building, it was on 3rd Street, uh, somewhere on 3rd Street. But they look really similar, those buildings that he used in the 70s. Anyway, that show was canceled and it was revived, I think, for the Venice Biennale. And he did some criticisms, uh, museum statements which were fabulous i mean i i admire this uh uh that he steps out and criticizes but here's where it falls short we are in a monumental age that i call the age of fission and we need to have people of conscience like this artist to step out and it's wonderful to get his skeleton horse with a ticker tape uh, <laughs> <laughs> around the leg and for the London Dufa, uh, the, the people that agreed to this, I honestly, I mean, this, this is quite uh, an indictment on their empire and uh, that they allow it. But I think this is part of a mechanism that is in place to let bits and pieces out. So we're satisfied enough. I am not satisfied because the age of vision is the the, the epic age that will potentially end all life on our planet. And this is a representation of that. But without, without the appropriate, appropriate commentary, we're still, we're still static. We're static. That's what I mean. And just as a reflection, I mean, I like this artist. But, you know, if I look at it here, you have uh, images and you see he's an older man he's he's i'm sure quite educated wise intelligent has had many interactions with other artists but you see this it's it the color the feeling it's very antiseptic i mean it's conceptual you know your your mobile what is that that is uh, i think it has to do with the um, u.s constitution the freedom of speech and all that on a mobile uh so there is social commentary beautiful I mean, beautiful. But the overall feeling as you go through, and you know, the pop, pop art, he's a pop artist. He's like somebody that's uh, latched onto that. And he's influenced. He's quite influenced. He admits this uh, by, different, by different people. <laughs> that's beautiful there. What is that? Let's have a look. Okay. This is about, this is about I think, the uh, construction of the, uh, uh, on this island, uh, the Abu Dhabi Guggenheim place. Uh, is there a better one? Here's, here's the place that looks like the graffiti, physical graffiti building thing. Um, it's not, but it's similar. And uh, he's protested the building using slave labor basically in Abu Dhabi at the building of uh, the uh, Guggenheim. They call it Happiness Island, <laughs> built with slave labor. And you can see his, uh, the imagery is very 
what is it? It's, it's, it's colorless. It's lifeless. It's, it's the age of fission art. It's perfect. It's the age of fission art. But there has to be a component, as I say, to transition into some kind of a, beyond this uh, wordless criticism, these pieces of art that are produced that, yes, wonderful, terrific. But as a person, I, 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 find, it, I find it really disturbing that he's still, at, in his 80s, he's still very concerned about his... Uh, being misinterpreted. Why, who gives a shit whether I'm misinterpreted or not? Really, is this beautiful or what? Look at look at that. Is, is that something? <laughs> very stiff. I mean, it's a photo-based art. It's very stiff. Uh, it lacks any kind of sensuality, but it's definitely critical. It's uh, it's beautiful. I I like it, but I wish you know. I mean, I guess. Um, <laughs> I go through it. Have a look. Uh, but again, my comment is that uh, we're stuck here um, because even these uh, these wise uh, swamis of the art world in the West are still zipper lips, and I, I don't like it. Uh, I wish it wasn't that way. I wish they'd speak up. <laughs>